Hi everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. Today we're going to do something totally different. There's a new feature in Easel. It's being able to take a DXF file from, let's say, AutoCAD or other CAD software and be able to bring that directly into Easel and be able to carve it. That's what we're doing today. Let's get started. Recently, the Inventables team added a new feature to be able to allow to import DXF files. And today my son sent me a DXF file. He had emailed this to me and I saved it in my download sections and this is it right here. So I'm going to highlight this and go ahead and open it. Yeah, selected the file now. I'm going to go ahead and hit upload. And this is what it brings us into. And I don't know if you can see that or not. It's very light. But this is in inches. I'm going to keep it in inches. I'm not going to do anything else with it. I'm just going to import it. Okay, here's the file imported. Now we're going to zoom out so that we can see and actually get the size of the project that he sent to me. Okay, this is a full size drawing and he sent this in to me. So the size of my work area is 20 by 30. We're going to carve this in a piece of foam board. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and come over here and select the size of my material. And I'm going to select this as being 30 inches. And the y-axis is going to be 20 inches. One of the things that I want to do with this is I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this file and set it up into a separate workpiece so I can play with it and do some things and do a little bit of experimenting. Now I can actually play with this and make some adjustments without changing the original drawing. The first thing that I want to do before making any changes is I want to be able to look at this detailed view and be able to see what it's going to look like if I printed or carved this just the way it is. And then I want to go ahead and hit simulate. And let's get an idea of what it's going to do. One thing I'm curious about, you see a lot of red. So there's a lot of movement in the toolpath. But again, this is what the experimentation is all about. I want to be able to see what I can do with this new feature in Easel. I've removed the outer line, which is the edge of the board itself. And now let's take a look at this wall right here. And let's see if it is how it is attached to the other drawing. So that's everything highlighted. Okay, so I can move that. So what I'm just going to do is come up to edit and do unmove and that puts that right back into place. So this is going to be a shared line with this wall and this line coming down here will be shared. Now then I want to take the same thing and take a look at this block here and see if that is an individual line. When I do that it grabs this whole entire section So that's a shared line. Okay, so let's go ahead and unmove that and put it back. And I think it, this is because these are individual lines and when I selected it, it selected this line as well. Now, the, this very top line I want to be able to eliminate. 
So that's going to be the edge of the paper itself. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and highlight just this line and we're going to delete it. Okay, and then I'm going to go over to the left side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to zoom in closer so that I can see it. We're going to highlight this line and we're going to cut that out of the picture. So now when I carve this, this will carve these individual lines here and it will not cut this outer edge because I've actually eliminated that. That will become the edge of the drawing itself. So I think that's actually going to work pretty well. The other thing that I decided to do, since this foam board is 30 inches, which maxes out the um, X-carve, I'm actually reducing these lines down by about an inch because I do not want the machine to hit the stops and then lose steps. So all I'm doing is just highlighting each one of these lines and reducing it by about one inch because that'll be easily adjusted once the carve is actually done. We'll go down here at the bottom so there's nothing there. So that will be fine. That will not hit the stops. And then if I look over on the left hand side, I'm about a half an inch from the edge there. So that should be fine. I'm not worried about this because we have plenty of room on this axis to be able to carve. So now then, what I'm going to do is go over here. I took the calipers and measured the foam and it's really about 0.19 of an inch. I do not want to cut all the way through. So what I'm going to do is set the depth of the material to the actual thickness, which is the 0.197 or 0.19. And then I'm going to come over and zoom back out, highlight the entire project, with the entire project highlighted, I'm going to change the depth of cut now to 0.14. The next thing that I'm going to do is actually alter the cut settings and I'm going to change this feed rate to 100 because again we're cutting foam and I need to be able to have a fast feed rate. Plunge rate is 12 inches for a minute. The depth per pass we can do this I think in one pass. So we're going to put this at 0.14. I'm going to change my bit to a sixteenth of an inch. Now I'm using an upcut bit. Now then with all of that set, let's go ahead and hit the detail preview and hit simulate and see how long it's going to take now to be able to carve. Now it's going to take about 20 minutes. I'm going to use the glue and tape method to be able to hold this down. I don't need tape across all of it to be able to prevent those windows from dropping out because we're not going to be cutting all the way through the foam. Okay, I went ahead and glued down the board and I've checked it and there's a couple of places where it did not stick. I went ahead and added some extra tape. The carve is actually going very well and you can see with a hundred inches per minute on the feed rate it's just going through this foam like butter which that's what I expected. You can also see that there's a lot of extra movement and that was indicated by those red lines when we did the simulation. But the good thing is it is cutting correctly. The one thing that I'm not sure of is whether these lines were drawn this way or if easel just interpreted and translated the tool paths in this format. 
Here is another example where it goes across where it should be cutting and has a start point on the left side and then carved exactly across the motion it already moved. Plus it's duplicating that line that's already cut. The efficiency is not there because there's a lot of wasted movement in the carving. However, the good thing is is that it is carving correctly and doing a good job. Now the one thing I didn't do is take advantage of being able to speed up the feed rate. I just left it at the 100 inches per minute. Not sure if you can see it in the video, but right here it did hit the stops and it did miss a step. So when it came back down to this point, it actually was about a sixteenth of an inch off and it made that line wider than what it should have been. So this actually goes to show that the line that was on the waste board is not the actual limit of the machine itself. So this was a good learning experience as well and I'm glad that I allowed an inch on that side or it would have seriously caused some bad problems. A sixteenth of an inch was not a big deal because of the type of carving that we're doing and it continued on just fine without any problems whatsoever. You can see the blue here so you can tell that it's going through to the tape. Now as it comes across this point again this is where it had missed a step before and because it missed a step the first time it did perfectly okay for this pass. But again you can see the wasted movement and that it traveled all the way back across the x-axis and then it went ahead and cut on that path. And I'm very happy that it didn't miss the step again and it stopped where it needed to stop. And again it travels all the way back across instead of cutting at this point. So again wasted movement but it still works. Okay, here's the finished project the way it turned out. I went ahead and pulled out some of the openings for the windows just so that you could see that. But if you look at it from the DXF file that was imported directly from the computer into Easel, Easel did a good job of being able to convert it. Now then, 30 inches is maxed out for the um, X-Carve. And I did make that adjustment by eliminating a couple of the lines. But one of the things that I want to point out, because I have never cut anything to the absolute maximum before, I had assumed that this edge was going to be the maximum distance that the X-Carve can do. And actually, this point here is really the max point. And even at that, it did hit the stops and it did skip a step. As you can see from looking down here at this point, this line, this line is actually wider than what it should be. Now what I'm going to do is mark this point so that I know where the max limit is on the X-Carve. So overall I'm very pleased with this. Now I'm actually glad that I tried the max limits on the x car to see actually where it is and this was fun to do this is going to be great for being able to use for modeling with what my son does with the war hammer you could also use this method to be able to make some awesome christmas decorations with the town scenes and the buildings and one of the things that I'm going to be doing with this is making the foam airplanes, the remote control airplanes. So I'm looking forward to this and I am really glad that I did this experiment today. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.